I'm Ellis Martin. Join me now for a conversation with Jordan Trimble, the President and Chief Executive Officer of Sky Harbor Resources, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol SYH and in the U.S. on the OTCQB as SYHBF. Sky Harbor is a preeminent uranium and thorium exploration company with projects located in the prolific Athabasca Basin of Saskatchewan, Canada. The company has just secured an option to acquire an initial 51% and up to 100% of the Russell Lake Uranium Project from Rio Tinto in the Athabasca. This brings the total land package of Sky Harbor Resources in the Athabasca Basin to over 450,000 hectares, or 4,500 square kilometers, consisting of a total of 15 properties with some of the most high-grade uranium targets in the world. Jordan, welcome back to the program. It's great to visit with you here in Vancouver. It's great to see you. Thanks for hosting and looking forward to catching up. Well, one of the things I'm really interested in being a shareholder of Sky Harbor is news like you have now here with Russell Lake. This is a potentially gigantic project. We don't know that for a fact now, but I use the word potentially. Let's go into what's coming along with the 10,000 meter drill campaign at Russell Lake. So we announced just a few days ago our inaugural 10,000 meter drill program at Russell Lake. As we've discussed in previous interviews, Russell Lake is an advanced stage exploration asset in a very, very prime location, in the eastern side of the Athabasca Basin, a deal that we struck with Rio Tinto last year, which is allowing us to earn up to potentially 100% of the project through staged earn-in, several phases. This initial 51% earn-in we can complete with several million dollars of exploration expenditures over the next few years. We're hoping we can complete that in relatively short order. This is the first major program that we'll be carrying out at the project. 10,000 meters. It's our largest individual drill program that we've ever carried out as a company. We can look to expand that and we'll likely look to add meters later in the year as this program will take us right through to late spring, early summer. So this will provide lots of news flow for the company over the next six months or so. We're planning 18 to 20 drill holes. We're going to have several phases of drilling starting with this initial three to 4,000 meters of drilling. We'll have a couple of breaks in between these phases just to allow us to catch up with the assays and the news flow. This is the project, as we've discussed again, uh, it's very, very perspective geologically. It's basically all of the ground between the MacArthur River Mine Project to the north, the largest, richest uranium deposit in the world, the Key Lake Mill to the south, which is one of only two operating uranium mills in the Athabasca Basin. We have our co-flagship project, Moore Lake, adjacent to the east, and then Denison's flagship Wheeler River Project hosted the Phoenix deposit, which is a development project is adjacent to the west. We basically, with Russell, encircle the Wheeler River claims to the north, to the east of the claims, and to the south. Uh, as you know, Denison is a large corporate and strategic shareholder of ours. Dave Cates, our president and CEO, is on our board, so we have a very close working relationship and partnership with Denison. Russell Lake has had a fair bit of historical drilling and work, but most of this drilling was exploratory in nature, widely spaced drill fences, three, four, 500 meters apart. So previous operators did not go in and tighten this up and do systematic programs to vector in on what could be high-grade uranium discoveries and deposits at the project. So that's what we're doing now with this initial phase of drilling. We're going to go back into a few target areas, in particular, an area called the grayling zone, where it's right off the road. It's near the exploration camp that we're staging out of there. There's power lines that run up along the road. So we've got the infrastructure. This grayling zone's near nearby that infrastructure. And we're going to go in and test in between some of these widely spaced drill fences. In some of those drill fences and drill holes are host to uranium mineralization, and some in particular have multi-percent higher grade uranium over skinny wit. So we believe that there are potentially several discoveries that could be made. We want to go in, we want to unlock that value through this drilling, and we believe we can deliver a new high grade discovery at the project this year. One of the reasons this project hasn't been developed previously, I'm assuming, is because the market just wasn't there, and it is now, really, isn't it? Yeah, there's a long history to the project. As I said, there's been a fair bit of historical exploration, but because it's such a big property, you got to remember, it's over 73,000 hectares. It's prime real estate, but really a lot of the uh, historical exploration was reconnaissance work, was exploratory wildcat drilling. And so it's now at a stage where it's primed for a new discovery to be made. A lot of that 
foundation or base has been placed with the previous exploration, we're now able to go in on a relatively turnkey project and again, hopefully deliver a new discovery for our shareholders. The previous operators being Rio and Hathor and some previous operators even before Hathor, again, I've done a lot of the heavy lifting, if you will, to get the project to where it is. We're confident that we can go in with some new geological modeling, some new thinking and be successful there. We've also hired a geological consulting group called Condor Consulting. And what they're doing for us, and they're doing a fantastic job thus far, is they're basically going back and aggregating and compiling all of the historical geological and geophysical data. They're stitching it all together. They're re-examining it from a new modern lens, and they're going to then prioritize, help prioritize regional targets at the project so that going forward, we are drilling our best target. So we're starting off with the obvious targets, which are the targets in between mineral drill fences, but hundreds of meters apart. We've had success at Moore Lake, our co-flagship project just to the east using this same strategy. And going forward, there's going to be a number of other high priority drill targets that we will drill test with the help of Condor Consulting. Everyone knows that the majors like to have juniors like yourself do a lot of the heavy lifting. They do this globally. Rio Tinto does it. Arano does it. Arano Canada does it. Arano France does it. Denison, Cameco, all the majors do that. I think it says a lot that you have partnerships with three of the majors like Arano, Denison, and now Rio Tinto. Let's talk about some of your junior partnerships here. There's quite a few. Absolutely. So as you know, we have this dual prong strategy. We are focused on making discoveries and advancing our primary projects of Russell Lake, which we just covered, as well as our 100% owned Moore Lake project, which we are planning to drill at some point this year. The benefit of having Russell Lake in our portfolio now and the exploration camp there, the road, the power lines, is that we can actually access Moore Lake and the high grade Maverick corridor much easier. So we can move the drill rig back and forth between Russell and Moore. So you will see additional drilling at Moore Lake as we continue to have success delineating high grade zones of uranium there at the Maverick corridor. And in particular, in these underlying basement rocks. But getting over to the second part of the business, which is the prospect generator business that we've built up, and it's grown quite a bit in the last several years. As you know, we have our two joint venture partners over on the west side in Arano at Preston and at the East Preston Project. As in Cork, Energy is now the majority holder of that project. They're about to embark on one of their largest drill programs, 6,000 meters, which will start shortly. So we're very excited to have them continue advancing and working on that project. And we now have five active earn-in option partners and a couple of new partners, which we discussed last year. But just to cover off those five, we have ASX-listed Valor Resources earning in at our Hook Lake project, expecting some more exploration and work from them this year. We have Madero Mining at our Yurchison project. They just did some initial exploration and field work last year. So we're expecting that they'll be ramping up the exploration and potential drill programs at the Yurchison project this year in 2023. We have base in uranium, which has been actively and quite quickly advancing the Man Lake project as they're earning in at that property. Again, much like Madero at Yurchison, we're expecting Basin to ramp up their exploration efforts this year as well in 2023. And then more recently, in some very exciting news over the last several months, are two new option partners that we've brought in. Yellow Rocks, which is a private Australian company that will be seeking a listing here on the ASX. We've optioned them two of our projects, the Wally and Usam projects on the northeastern part of the basin. So we're just putting together initial plans for initial exploration and work at those properties. And then the biggest option agreement that we've signed, the biggest deal to date as far as our prospect generator business is concerned, is a deal that just received conditional approval from the exchange. It's a deal that we struck with a company called Tisdale Energy at our South Falcon East project. And this earn-in option agreement uh, entails Tisdale spending $10.5 million in exploration expenditures over a five-year period and paying Sky Harbor $11.6 million in cash in stock over that same five-year period to earn up to a 75% interest. Now, this is also an advanced stage exploration property that we have. It has a small resource. It has a number of prospective targets. We are expecting that they will be drilling at some point this year at the project and a fairly significant program is what we're expecting. So when you couple all of these partner-funded programs with our 
initial 10,000 meters of drilling at Russell, you're looking at uh, between 30 to 40,000 meters of drilling here between us and our partner companies over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. It's a significant uh, combined drilling campaign, though certainly the largest ever uh, carried out by Sky Harbor and its partner companies. And that will provide uh, for a significant amount of news flow uh, and potential catalysts over the next year to year and a half. With over 400,000 hectares in the Athabasca, does that make you the largest junior in the area operating under this dual prong model that you have? Yeah, we are by acreage, by land holding, one of the largest mineral claim holders in northern Saskatchewan. We have over 460,000 hectares or approximately 1.2 million acres of, of mineral claims. It's 18 projects now that we have. Um, so there's the two primary projects or co-flagship projects in Russell and Moore Lake, and then the 16 other projects that uh, we would group into our prospect generator business. But it's an exciting time um, for uranium companies. It's certainly an exciting time for shareholders of Sky Harbor with the drilling and the news flow that we'll have coming up here, and we're expecting a, a great year ahead. I think there's two things that are kind of driving the market, and specifically your market right now. One of them is the critical minerals initiative that has been put into place by the Biden administration. And then going down south to Australia, I believe you have two partners already from Australia. They're being very, very aggressive in the energy sector and looking for projects and advancing projects in North America. Yeah, well, starting with the critical metal element to this, it's not just in the U.S., in fact, in Canada. And we've raised some money in the last year using basically a, a flow through tax credit that is allocated to projects that host critical metals, including uranium projects. So we're seeing in North America governments in Canada and the U.S. really pushing for the development of these critical metal projects, including uranium projects. So that's very exciting. And I think we'll continue to see that momentum carry through is, again, nuclear is the only source of emissions-free, baseload, affordable, scalable, reliable electricity generation. We're seeing the demand growing at over 3% a year for uranium, for the fuel for these nuclear power plants. Yet the supply side, as we've discussed at length in the past, the supply side has been decreasing or shrinking over the last five and a half, six years. We simply aren't producing enough uranium to meet this growing demand. We're depleting secondary supplies and inventories. And now with the market bifurcating east versus west, I think we're going to see in particular the prices paid for North American, Australian, and call it Western pounds of uranium. We're going to see that price creep up. In fact, we're already seeing the Department of Energy paying 60 to $70 a pound for the uranium strategic reserve that the U.S. is building. So it's an exciting time for, in particular, North American uranium companies. To answer the second part of the question with Australian capital and Australian companies coming into the base, and yes, we have now two partners that are Australian companies. We've seen a lot of interest in Australia, both from the corporate side of things as well as the capital market side for uranium projects in the Athabasca Basin. So it's good to see that there's a lot of interest in Australia. It's a big mining country, and uh, it, I think it's also a, a good stamp of approval for the Athabasca Basin that you're seeing that capital flow into companies that are active in the basin. With all that you have going and you, you have a lot of projects right now, I would say that your share structure represents as minimal amount of dilution as possible. Yeah, I mean, that's a Part of the reason we have been growing this prospect generator business is that it allows us to bring in some additional capital through cash and stock in these partner companies to pay for the exploration, uh, help pay for some of the exploration at our core projects. In fact, right now, we are expecting to receive, assuming that these companies all complete their earnings, between 2 to $3 million a year over the next several years from these various option partner companies, 2 to $3 million in cash and stock. So it's a great way to help keep that equity dilution down. Obviously, we do raise money, though, to go out and drill and explore at our main projects, but we have 148 million shares issued in outstanding. We're trading between a 60 to $70 million market cap. I've been continuously purchasing shares in the open market, as have some other insiders and directors and management. I think the value proposition is as strong as it's ever been for the company, given what we have, and given that the prices of all of these companies shot up a year ago and obviously settled back 
back in and pulled back with the broader market. Uh, but we're starting to see things moving in the right direction again. And like I said, I think this is going to be a breakout year for the uranium price. And the timing for us is great, given that this is likely going to be our busiest year in terms of news flow. Sky Harbor Resources trading on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol SYH and on the OTCQX as SYHBF. Jordan Trimble, President and CEO. Thank you. It's always great to see you in person. I appreciate you joining me today in the program. Likewise, and thanks for having me. I've been speaking with Jordan Trimble, the President and CEO of Sky Harbor Resources, trading as SYH on the TSX Venture Exchange and the U.S. on the OTCQB as SYHBF. I'm Ellis Martin. You may assume that Ellis Martin is a shareholder on any of the companies that sponsor the Ellis Martin Report, which means he has a vested interest potentially in them.